Hello there, Jeff with the Big Shooterist channel. Thanks for tuning in. Today's video, we're going to discuss how to make your Glock rock. Stick around. So, let's talk Glock. Who doesn't like a little bit of Tupperware in their kit? Seems to be pretty popular. Seems to be extremely popular. But I have to admit that it took a while for me to come on board. I handled oh, better than a hundred of them before I actually gave it a try. And there's no looking back. I like the platform. It's comfortable. It always fires. And if I do my part, it hits what it's supposed to. The reason for making this video is I just received a new trigger to test. It's a Mick Glock trigger. Uh, it came in from Ghost Targets, and there'll be a link at the bottom of the video. And it's a drop-in trigger. If you can disassemble your Glock, you can drop this trigger in with no problem at all. It was very smooth. It's an adjustable trigger. You can adjust where the striker falls, and you can adjust the over-travel. And it's very comfortable. I'm quite impressed. I like it an awful lot. The trigger isn't the only thing that I've changed on this particular gun, though. The guys at Lone Wolf Distributors have become my Glock gurus and have been very helpful to me. And one of the first things that I needed was a threaded barrel. So I got one of the Lone Wolf threaded barrels and it's always performed fantastic. Why do I need a threaded barrel? Because I shoot with a suppressor more often than not. There are two suppressors that I prefer when I'm using the Glock 17 as a platform. The first one is the Gemtech Tundra. It's a very nice can, it's very lightweight, and it performs very well. The other suppressor that I enjoy an awful lot, and that's what we're using today, is the Silencer Co. Osprey. And you'll notice the Osprey is very unique. It's rectangular instead of round. It gives you a lot of volume without having it very, very high and obstructing your sights. And being flat, it actually acts as a natural extension of the slide. Very easy to shoot. Also very easy on the ears. So the threaded barrel for the suppressor was really the first evolution of change um, to my Glock 17. I also changed out the back plate. It's a stainless back plate instead of the factory. And at some point we'll do some other modifications to it. But other than the trigger, the barrel and the back plate, for the most part it's a stock gun. I also like the plus two extensions and I get these from Lone Wolf as well. There are factory uh, extensions and there are a few aftermarkets out there. I'm really not sure about many of the aftermarkets and I try to stick with the factory stuff whenever I can. That's definitely um, my attitude with magazines. I haven't found a magazine that performs as well as the factory Glock magazine, although I'm sure there may be some out there, I'm just not familiar with them. I hear mixed feelings on these, but I enjoy the finger grooves. Since mine's an earlier Glock, um, I use the whole handle rubber grip, the slip over, and it seems to fit my hand very well. Now because I test so many accessories that are NFA, I went ahead and registered this as a short barreled rifle quite some time ago. And of all the stocks that I've tried, the Mako stock is the one that I prefer. It's comfortable, it's fast off and on, and it has a positive locking system. fantastic stock. Wish I could shoot that accurate without one. Now one thing I discovered about the Glock is with a little bit of practice you actually can be extremely accurate with it. So we found some different drills to help with the accuracy and if you practice your breath control, your trigger squeeze, and your sight alignment you'd be surprised how awkward you can hold that gun and still hit what you're aiming at. 
Let's try for the ghost target hanging from the string on the left, upside down. Unbelievable, isn't it? Amazing. And lucky on occasion. I certainly didn't expect to hit that last shot on the first try, but I guess even a broken watch is right twice a day. You can get lucky. And a little bit of practice doesn't hurt either. Well, that's how I rock my Glock. I'm actually very happy with the McGlock trigger. Uh, all the Lone Wolf components have uh, done me well for an awful long time now. I like the Mako stock. Um, I like the whole grip. Gives me a better purchase on the firearm. And uh, all in all, pretty cool gun, but it's quite tame compared to some of the guns I've seen out there. Why don't you let me know in the comments what you've done to your Glock for performance upgrades, because I'd like to learn a little bit more from you. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, have fun and be safe.